Hello, my name is Janine Setetsu Larson. I'm a senior Dharma teacher with the Empty Moon Zen Sanghas and a resident priest for the Bright Cloud Zen practice groups in Seattle and Woodenville, Washington. As our Empty Moon Zen uh, groups have been sharing a class on the five precepts and as that is winding up, I've asked five of our Bright Cloud practitioners to share a little bit about their discernment around and the experience of receiving the five precepts and sowing the wagesa. Three have also uh, taken jukai and received the 16 bodhisattva precepts, sowing the rakasu. So first, I'd like to just introduce our five speakers. Janet Sagan Putnam of Woodenville, Washington, took the five precepts in 2011 and jukai in 2017. Linda Miyoki Barslag Benson, Lake Forest Park, Washington, took the five precepts in 2011 and Jukai in 2019. Dinah Seishin Hartley of Seattle, Washington, took the five precepts in 2017 and Jukai in 2019. Patricia Saunders, Woodenville, Washington, took the five precepts in 2019. And Sally Dacey, Seattle, Washington, also took the five precepts in 2019. Why were you moved to take the precepts? Did you do this early on in your practice or did you wait a while? I showed up just to meditate for some rest and at the Unitarian Sangha group. And after meditating a while and resting a while, we kept talking and and doing readings and so on, and I came to appreciate what I was learning in this in this group. Um, so the 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 precepts were they just sort of evolved. Um, so I took the five precepts last year, and um, I'm really glad to be studying them. And I'm, we're studying them again this year. And I get a lot out of them. They're not, um, they seem very rule-like when you just look at them, do not kill. And I haven't been killing a lot of things, so that didn't seem too relevant when I first glanced at it. But uh, they're a lot deeper than that. They're about embracing life to start with and that sort of thing. So um, I, I think there's a lot there. And I value the Sangha, a lot of uh, kindness and um, uh, an incentive to be more intentional about living and uh, everyone's involved and they everyone does what they can to change things that should be changed whether they change or not we we all try i've been sitting in meditation uh, with this group for about 15 years I took the first five precepts about 10 years ago. I took the precepts on personally, which was really an eye opener. Um, when I'd been 13, I think I took con confirmation classes through the Lutheran church and thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not. And it was very, you know, just that's what it is. This is not what it is in Buddhism. It's where do I stand? What's important to me? And how is this? How do I use Buddhist teachings to affect my own personal life? So it's taken another 10 years until I decided to take um, the whole 16 Bodhisattva vows, the precepts. And I did that last May with James in 2019. At that point, I'd been through a number of other major surgeries. I'd had cancer. I'd gone through treatment. Um, so I really was committed to finding what is rock bottom here for me? What, what really helps me make, through, make it through this life? And Buddhism has provided a lot of that for me. I know about myself that uh, I am more likely to follow through and to attend um, to things that I know I want if I have structure around me 
and if I have teachers that I respect and that I think uh, help me along my pathway. And so uh, for me, it became just an amazingly wonderful opportunity to uh, learn and grow and be with loving, caring, thoughtful people who I thought were living lives that I could learn a lot from. What was the most challenging part of the discernment and preparation process? What did you discover was most important for you? Uh, uh, for me, I think the most difficult part was, was moving beyond the literal uh, rules, you know, do this, don't do this, don't do this, you know, the Ten Commandments sort of form of things. Um, I tend to be a, a very concrete thinker and uh, it's, it, it's still difficult for me to move beyond uh, that literal sense and move into the compassionate or absolute uh, sense of what the precepts are really about and how they really touch my life uh, in ways beyond the literal. And that, um, that was a challenge in preparing and uh, it continues to be a challenge. What is still the most challenging is how hard it is for me to understand that what I'm really looking for is my own answers and how much I look for other people's answers. And that's really true in the precepts too, that I wanted to be right on some fundamental level, but someone else is right, not my own right. And so one of the reasons I stay, uh, one of the many reasons I stay on this path with the precepts is because getting more and more in touch with searching my own truth um, is, is I'm understanding is, is the way. So the Wakesa that I sewed, this thing, um, well, when you're sewing these things and doing these little knots, I don't know if you can see these, but this is kind of a pain in the neck. You can't think about anything else or you'll have a huge mess. So it's, it's this exercise in focus. Um, so yeah, um, it was just an exercise in focus. Mm -hmm. Immersion, immersion in sewing little knots. I think one of the challenges was this idea of um, do not steal. Well, I don't steal stuff exactly like like um, Patty was saying. You know, I don't kill, <laughs> but but the idea of um, of not taking what is not freely given. Uh, when I buy something super, super cheap that is a result, a result of someone being taken advantage of. I mean, just, it was really life-giving to look into that. Uh, but it also meant I needed to, that, that I wanted to change what I was doing. Um, in, the, in the Jukai precepts, um, um, the, the the two where you're not talking ill of other people um, in my line of work that's that's kind of a way that people talk um, and I joined in on but it would but it was something that I really had to work on a lot I had to really work on it and see it rising up and and just take a moment and um, that was a huge change um, and it was a question of who who do I want to be in this world? You know, it was mm. it was a connection to a whole tradition of questioning who who do we want to be in this world? How do we want to go through this life? Uh, do we want to be um, opening ourselves and become more connected with other people and with other living beings, or do we want to stay walled off? 
what was of great importance to me was having the opportunity to explore each precept at a time and really narrow my focus on it and kind of zoom in on it to explore what does it mean to me and then to explore myself. How does this truly affect me in my life? How does this affect my everyday dealings with other people? How does it affect how I view life in general? Um, I think the very first one was the one that I engaged with most strongly at the very beginning is not killing. My son was turned 18 years old. There was a war going on over in Afghanistan. Young people were being sent over there. And so I got very involved in anti-war protests at that time. Um, and it wasn't just my son. I could identify with all the mothers whose sons and daughters were being sent to kill for no good reason and being killed for no good reason. Um, so that helped inform my decision to do that. Um, it also informed my decision to think more clearly about eating meat. And I chose to pretty much refrain from eating meat. Uh, and I feel better about that decision. It feels like it's better for the world. What was most meaningful about the ceremony and ritual of receiving the precepts? They both were very, very um, serious, I think. I, I just felt very um, personally, I don't know, very, very uh, heartfelt and serious about both of them. Is the joyfulness of doing that in a group and the respect uh, of, of the process and of the people in it. So just this level of happiness and joy and respect um, that the ritual provides was, was really wonderful. The ceremony was wonderful. I was freaked out. Um, <laughs> I was so nervous that I would have to speak out loud in front of everybody. Um, but there were four of us up there, Patty and Sally, and then Dinah and I were both taking Jukai. And so my Dharma sisters gave me a lot of strength as we sat in front of the teachers and James and spoke to each of the vow that we were committing to make and it was powerful that we each spoke to each vow and we all had different takes on it and that was respected and nurtured uh, and then janine when you um gave me my rock sue at the end i i feel teary even right now uh, it, was very emotional for me. It felt like there was this deep connection and that I was following a path that has been almost forever in human time. And it's a path that only I alone can discern, but that there have been so many people before me, so many teachers before me who have who have walked that path and who have shown lights back for me to try to help guide me along the way. I would say definitely it was the women that took the precepts or Jukai and I took the first five precepts. So there were four of us and just that sense of shared purpose and commitment, I, um, I didn't think for me it was a, a, a huge commitment. I'm saying I'm, I want to, I aspire to, to, I aspire to do these things. Um, um, but just 
um, this group of us did did this, and there was the entire sangha there supporting supporting us, and it it was just lovely. It was a, a lovely ceremony, and there wasn't anything difficult about it. It was for me. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't do a confessional or anything like that. I certainly have issues, but I didn't do uh, that. I um, just stuck to my precepts, and I just uh, I yeah, I remember it. It's, it was. Mm -hmm. I would say when I took the five precepts, um, what really struck me, what 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 meant the most to me at the moment. It was my very first um, public offering of incense to the Buddha. And um, that just felt really, I don't know, tingly. It felt really, you know, felt it there. Um, in the Jukai ceremony, which was so lovely, um, uh, the whole thing was, was very moving. Um, being there with all four of us, I'd say, the thing that pushed me into tears, <laughs> that really, really affected me deeply was receiving my Dharma name, um, mm -hmm. which uh, I, I continue to hold that as sort of an alter ego, as a, as a, a better self, as um, the, the self that I aspire to be. And um, receiving that name was huge. Do you consider yourself a Buddhist? Yes, I am a Buddhist. And it's because it's so vital to me. I feel like I'm trying to These aren't the right words, but it's like I want to know <laughs> what is this? And I feel like the more I engage with Buddhism, the more I discover and the more I have yet to discover. And so I keep being called back somehow. In terms of religion, I don't consider myself a Buddhist. In terms of some of the wisest views of what life is and how one should live, I think the Buddha was on the mark, really on the mark. And so learning as much as I can about that is important to me. Yes, I do. There are many kinds of Buddhists. Um, you know, do I have to live up to some standard? Um, it's not so hard edged and defined and it's not, you know, it, it doesn't make me believe in reincarnation all of a sudden or, or you know, so. Mm. Yeah. What speaks to you most powerfully in your Zen practice now? Being a social worker, it's been incredibly important to me to see the value of human life and to honor the relationships that humans have together. I do believe we have a social contract and it um, Buddhism really informs that in the sense that we look out for each other. We do no harm. And if we do harm, we try to do the least harm and so on. I feel this foundation, like I have under underpinnings that are kind of holding me. And at the same time, I feel more precarious because nothing is a given. <laughs> I have some guidelines to help me along the way, but I need to keep figuring it out. And I think it behooves anybody, even who is not a Buddhist, to consider, you know, what is my impact on the world? How do I want to stand in relation to other people? One of the things that was, that really was um, a big deal for me was that, that, my having done this path and and especially because of those two ceremonies those two commitments um it made a difference in my extended family um how i 
interacted and how I perceived things and and it made me more brave to take action. I'm I'm the fifth child out of six. And so I mostly was trying to, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I was younger. I, I felt like the older ones probably knew more in some, on some level. Um, but I would see things happen and instead of being discouraged or complaining or whatever, uh, or seeing something that, you know, I mean, I was able to take apart my own reactions to things Mm -hmm. And it was, and so I could go ahead and talk more clearly with people and listen better and sit back more than I, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, sit, be more patient and listen yeah. better than I used to. Um, and to be more thoughtful in general. Um, yeah. I want it to affect my life and my practice more and more. Um, it reorients me to the questions I want to be asking every day. It reorients me to what I want to be important in my life. And I find that I really benefit from that reorientation on a regular basis. Thank you.